joy, my King. this morning because you are who you are you are God alone you are the only wise God our Savior our deliverer our healer our banner hallelujah you are our righteousness God I thank you you are our salvation I thank you Lord because you are our peace hallelujah even in the midst of our storms, you are our peace, oh God. And we thank you, Lord, for who you are. We exalt you, oh God. We adore you, oh God. We esteem you, oh God, higher than any name that is named in this earth, oh God. Father, we thank you. We thank you, oh God. 
because you woke us up this morning and you started us on our way. You kept us even through the night watch, oh God. And God, I thank you that you woke us up. Hallelujah. The songwriter said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. I thank you, Lord, that you woke us up. Now we will have joy unspeakable and full of glory. We thank you, Lord. Had it not been for you, O oh God, and your love, we would be like driftwood, O oh God, out on the sea. We would be perishing. But God, I thank you that you saved us, that you deliver us, and that you heal us. God, you turn back our backsliding, O oh God. You call us back and you love on us. Even when we go astray, oh God, you call us back. I thank you, Lord, that we hear you and we return unto you. Now, God, I thank you for your favor. I thank you for the season of grace that we are in. I thank you, God, hallelujah, that old things are dying away and all things are becoming new, oh God. We thank you, Lord, hallelujah, that when our covers were empty, Lord, uh, you blessed us, oh God. Uh, you blessed our going out. Uh, you blessed our coming in. You blessed our children, oh God. Hallelujah. Even when the enemy would come up against us one way, oh God, you would cause them to flee seven different ways. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We want to honor you this morning. We don't think it robbery to just lavish praise on you, God, because of who you are. Hallelujah. We will not be stingy, oh God, when I praise. We will not be stingy when I worship God. We bow before you, God. We lay our crowns down at your feet, oh God, and worship you. Have your way today, God, in this house. Bless your man servant as he's your come forth. Leading your people, oh God, into righteousness. We thank you, oh God, that whatever that may be in his body, every pain, every ache, oh God, that you would lift it up, oh God, that he may be healed and that he may deliver the word of life unto your people, oh God. And Father, as we sit in our tent doors, we, we sit in with expectation, oh God, to receive that word in the name of Jesus. And we declare that everyone that hath an ear will hear what the Spirit has to say to us today. Father, we give you glory and we give you praise. We bless your name. We glorify you, God, and we magnify him. Ah, yes, God, we give you praise and glory. We give you praise and glory. Hallelujah. Come on, lift it up, lift it up. Glory, glory, glory. Come on, come on, come on. With the fruit of your lips, come on, give him praise. With the fruit of your lips, give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are. Yes, God. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. We exalt Yes, Lord, thee. we exalt you, God. We exalt thee. We exalt thee.
that you worship him out of the pits of your soul, oh God. Joy, my King. Hallelujah. What are you sacrificing unto him? Are you sacrificing a praise unto him? evangelistic ministry of Harrisburg. We thank God that you are here today. We thank God that our church is here on at 3405 North 6th Street in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. You are welcome to come in and worship with us. You are welcome to enjoy the praise and the fellowship with us. You are welcome to worship our God with us. This is a fantastic place to be. This is an awesome place to be. Amen. Come on, come on, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we look forward to seeing you real soon. So we welcome you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And we want, as we are standing, we will go ahead and do our announcements to and to uh, relieve Pastor of that duty. Hallelujah. On uh, the first thing we want to announce is about our Mission Central project. We still need your donations of new and gently used uh, pots and pans. Those are the items that, they, that is in high demand right now, and we are needing your support in that. We have gathered much. We have gathered many, but there is more to come. And so we will give you until uh, Sunday the 22nd to bring, if you have any other items you want to bring in, to bring those in for we will make delivery of our items that we have collected on October the 28th. Okay? So you have a little time yet. If you are still thinking about it and you want to bring more, just bring it in and we will make that delivery. Amen? Thank you for what you've already done. For Girl Scouts, our first troop meeting is going to be this Friday at 6 o'clock. Any interested parents and girls that are ages 5 through 17, you may come and if you're interested in volunteering, you also are invited to come in and that this is going to be our open house. We will have some activities for you. We will have uh, just a time of meet and greet, 
set the stage for what uh, is going to come uh, in this year. I'm excited about it. I'm volunteering. I've signed up even as an adult Girl Scout, huh? <laughs> I was a Girl Scout way back when, so now I've renewed. So I'm thankful for this opportunity that we can share um, this ministry to our youth in this part of Harrisburg. Amen? So the meeting will be held here at 6 o'clock on this Friday, October the 6th. Uh, Sister Fonda, if you have anything else you want to add, all right, thank God, thank God. So we will see you this Friday. Mama's Knee. We have just launched a new live stream ministry called Mama's Knee. Sister Fonda, if you can remember, Mama's Knee was birthed in me years ago. We thought that God wanted to do it through um, child care, but God said no. So this time, when God kind of nudged me again, it says it's time to bring Mama's knee forward. I thank God that he had a vessel already prepared that I could pass the baton to, and that is in the person of ministry. Minister Iris Winters. She is the host. She had her first um, live stream, was broadcast on yesterday. It is on Facebook Live. It is on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. So check it out. She did a marvelous job. And it will be streaming every Saturday uh, by 12 o'clock on every Saturday. So look forward to that. If you're not friends uh, and following our Facebook page, we will ask that you could go there and, and see the live stream. It would be at Church F-G-E-M. At Church F-G-E-M is our Facebook page. So you, we want you to like that page, and we want you to follow us, all right? All right, God is doing great things. You got to get involved. You don't want to be left behind. All right, all right, God is good. I thank God for the, the, the fire that is being stirred up again. Many, many hands are coming alongside to help us do the ministry that God has called us to do. And that includes you. So come alongside us. Let's partner together to get this work done. There is too much to do. Our youth need us. Huh? Our young and our old need us. And so we need to be available for them. So, and we're just waiting for our men to start their fellowship again. Amen, amen. For Bible study, we will continue to do Bible study on live stream. And as I said, if you are a follower of our Facebook page, then you will be able to uh, get a notification when we go live for any of our postings. And all you've got to do is just follow us on uh, at the time of our study, which is at 7 o'clock p.m. on Wednesdays, 7 o'clock p.m. on Wednesdays. Well, guess what? You're talking about exciting things are happening. Uh, healing Soul Support Group. This is our new support group that is coming soon. I am in the process with my team of, of providing instructions so then that we will be able to come forth in power and on one accord in one place, a safe place for people that are victims and survivors of traumatic experiences, that they may come and just have a place to talk, to receive uh, uh, relief 
from what they have experienced, whether it be new or old, because a lot of people are still carrying a whole bunch of stuff that has happened to them through the years, whether it be physical abuse, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, incest, uh, intimidation, whatever the name of the trauma is, a lot of us have experienced that and have not dealt with it. But if I just want you to know that this, just look out for it, Healing Soul Support Group will be coming real soon. And we will be meeting here at the church. Amen? So, so, so just keep tuning in that we will give you the information when we are ready to launch that publicly. Amen? Amen. Just wanted to give you a teaser right now. Just wanted you to know what's coming. Hallelujah. We got a lot of things coming. Amen. Toys for Tots. Our um, program has officially begun. We will begin uh, receiving applications as of Friday, this Friday, October the 6th. And we will be receiving applications up until November the 12th for Toys for Tots, okay? So if you know of any family that will have need that, uh, of, of this kind of help during this Christmas holiday season, we ask that you would have them contact us. I will be putting out information this week that will include all of the parameters and, and, and information that families would need that they may sign up their children. It would be for ages zero to 10 years old, amen? Zero to 10 years old. And so we will be uh, letting you know by way of information online. And uh, we will have the flyer here to pass out to each of you that you may share it with your community of, of friends and neighbors that um, have, may have need. Amen? So officially the campaign has begun today, but we will be begin to accept applications by this Friday. Okay? Amen, amen. Well, guess what? We have a birthday today. Ha! Somebody is, is nine years old today. Lacey Chamberlain! Whoa, look at her. Amen, amen, amen. We just want to say that we love you, young lady, and happy birthday. Can we sing it, Byron? Come on, let's sing some happy birthday. <laughs> come on, come on. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Another year older, another year wiser, well, another that. year stronger, yeah. another year brighter. Keep walking in God, He'll keep taking you higher. We like to say, Happy birthday! Come on! All right. God bless you. Happy birthday. Another year older, another year wiser. And we ask God's blessing to be over you in this year. Yes, yes, that blessings will come your way. That you will be studious. That you would just be friendly to your friends. That they will give you good, good, encouraging words as you go throughout this year. Amen. We love you. These are our announcements. Thank you, Pastor. And we will pass the, the baton to Pastor this morning. Amen. 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 Come on, give the Lord a hand clap for Pastor. Amen. We thank God for her. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you. This morning. Amen. We want to welcome our 
live stream audience. Amen. We want to welcome you here. We thank God for you joining us this morning. I want to say again, welcome as Pastor Nancy has already acknowledged that. Amen. I want to welcome uh, certainly, amen, uh, those of you at church family that's here with us today. Thank God for you. Amen. I certainly want to acknowledge, amen, Pastor Nancy, our assistant pastor. Amen. amen. Our elder, Elder Brenda, a good join. Amen. amen. Our trustee, Brother James, good join, and his lovely wife, Mother Brenda. Amen. And uh, we thank God for our own uh, Minister Iris Winters. Amen. We thank God for them uh, being with us today. We thank God for our newest trustee. Amen. Brother Gerald. Amen. amen. Come on, say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother Gerald and his lovely wife and his family. Amen. We thank God for them being with us also as well. Praise the Lord. And we thank God uh, for our deacon. Amen. Deacon Antoine and his family. Praise the Lord. We thank God for them uh, also as well. Thank God for our minister of music. Amen. Minister Byron. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord for him. Praise God. And we thank God for this mighty man of God, amen, who's serving the Lord in the capacity in the office, amen, in which God has gifted him uh, to, to do and to be, uh, not only to do it, but also to share that gift with others around in this community, amen. So we thank God for him at this time. We thank God for the announcements. I want to invite your attention in your word. Would you go with me this morning? We're going to go into our call to worship scripture which can be found in your bible if you would turn with me there in our call to worship scripture in the word of god let's go to the book of <clears throat> second samuel chapter number 22 second samuel chapter number 22 verses Two and three, Amen. verses 32, verses 47, and verse 50. Amen? Amen? So we're going to ask that you would stand on our feet as we do our call to worship scripture. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Second Samuel 22, verse 2 and 3, verses 32, verse 47, and verse 50. The word of the Lord says, and he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. My high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. Verse 32 the word of the Lord says, for who is God? Save the Lord. And who is, amen, a rock? Save our God. Verse 47 says to us, the word of the Lord says, the Lord liveth and blessed be my rock. Exalted be the God of the rock of my salvation. Verse 50 says, therefore, because of that, I will give thanks unto thee. O Lord, among the heathen, and I will sing praises unto thy name. Amen. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, you got a rock on your side. You ought to be able to praise him. Amen. Because the last thing I know and understand about a rock, a rock is will stand when nobody else will stand. Come on, say amen. You can shatter it. You can break it up. Amen. But the rock still remains. Come on, say amen. So I want to encourage you. Amen. We're here to praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for his word. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to ask that you would continue to remain standing as our brother, trustee, will come. Brother Gerald will come. Read our responsive reading that can be found in your Bible. And I'm going to let him tell you where it's found. Amen. Brother Gerald, I'm going to leave that part to you. Amen. Brother Gerald. Somebody say, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. This morning's responsive reading will be found in Psalms 84, 1 through uh, 12. Good 
say amen when we have it? Amen. amen. Psalms 84. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My, My soul, soul longeth, yea, yea even fainteth for, for the courts of the, courts of the Lord. Lord. And my heart and my flesh cry out for the, for the living God. God. Yea, the sparrow hath found an house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars. O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they, are they that, that dwell, dwell in thy house. house. They, will they will be still praising, praising thee. thee. Salam. Selah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them. Who, who passing, passing through the, the valley, valley of Baca, of Baca make, make it a well. well. The, the rain, rain also filleth the pools. The they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O, o Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, hear, hear my prayer. prayer. Give, Give ear, ear, O God, God of, Jacob. of Jacob. Selah. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in, in thy courts torch is better, is better than, than a thousand. thousand. I, I had rather, rather be a doorkeeper, doorkeeper in, in the house, house of my God, God than, than to, to dwell, dwell in the, in the tents, tents of the wicked. the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. All together. O Lord, o Lord of hosts, hosts blessed, blessed is that man, man that, that trusteth in, in thee. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap for, amen, our responsive reading. Praise God. Amen. We thank God for you at this time. We thank you, Brother Gerald. Praise the Lord. Uh, at this time, we're going to ask amen my son just to pray uh, for just a few moments just give us a few moments of opening prayer would you do that for us please amen oh, praise God our, our, our heads are bowed and our hearts look unto the Lord yes Lord most high God El Elyon, we give you glory, we give you praise. Yes, Lord. We give you honor that's due unto your name this day. Lord, we yes, just Lord. bless your name for the reading of your word, Father. Thank you, God. God, we thank you, Father God, that we may, Father God, not just be hearers, but also doers of your word yes, also. Yes, Lord. So, Lord, we ask you, Father God, to just let your word, Father God, take root in our hearts today, mm. God. Let your word take roots in our thoughts, Yes, oh Lord. God, yes, today. Lord. Father God, let your word, Father God, take root in our lips, O oh God. Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in your oh holy God. Name. We thank you, Father God, for all that you're doing in this moment yes, in time. Lord. God, we thank you for your presence, oh God. We thank Jesus. you for your power. We thank you for anointing, oh God, today in this sanctuary, God. And so, Lord, we ask you, Father God, to continue to move within this service, God. God. Move within each and yes, every Lord, one of us, yes, God, Lord. every man, woman, and child. In Jesus' name, those who are watching with us this morning, too. Yes, Lord. Father God, go. Father God, there, there's no, Hallelujah. there's no, uh, uh, um, there is no no lack in you, Father God. Yes, so, God. God, your presence go forth right now yes, over Lord. the airlines, oh God. Right in now. the name of Jesus in your Christ, holy God. Name. In Touch your holy those name. who are watching with us, oh God, from near and far, oh God. Jesus. In Jesus' mighty Hallelujah. name. Anoint them, oh yes, God. Lord. Yes, God. Let Lord. your glory be in their homes, oh God. Yes, Let your glory God, be with them as they're driving, oh God, as they're walking, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Yes, God, we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. 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 Amen, amen. Come on, say amen, amen, amen. Thank you, amen, for that beautiful prayer. Praise Lord. You may rest off of your feet. We thank God, amen, for uh, this time. And now it is giving time, amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> amen. And we're going to ask, amen, that brother, as Brother Gerald is passing out our operatory uh, envelopes, if you need one, raise your hand. He'll give you one. Those of you, amen, that are here with us today, those of you that are watching online, amen, if you want to uh, participate, amen, in this part of our church and our giving, we're going to ask, amen, that you would do that by viewing on our uh, page, amen, the way that uh, you can give all of those uh, areas on the web page with Cash App, PayPal, amen, you can send your money order in, your check in, amen. 
praise Lord, we'll be glad to accept that as you help to support our ministry here uh, in this city. Praise God. And we thank God for those of you that are, have already been doing that online. I want to say that we appreciate you here at, at our city. Amen. We thank God for you giving. We thank God for you sowing your seed and your offering. Amen. As you do it, uh, doing it unto the Lord. Our offering scripture can be found in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. Verses 2 through 5. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter number 8, verses 2 through 5. Hear ye the word of the Lord. The word of God says that how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I hear and record, yea, Beyond their power, they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering of the saints. And this day, this they did, not as we hope, but first gave their own selves to the Lord unto us by the will of God. Look at somebody and say, these people, gave out of the abundance of their heart. They were going through trials. They were going through situations in this church. Come on, say amen, in Corinthians. But they gave out of the abundance of their heart. Didn't worry about what, was going, what they were going through, but they gave liberally. They gave it unto the Lord. And this is what we need to understand, that if we do that, God said he won't withhold no good thing from us. If we do that, not worrying about what our pocketbook looked like, what our wallet looked like, praise the Lord, but what God can do for us. Amen. So we thank God, amen, that even though they were going through trials, they gave. So I want to talk to you this morning and tell you, you know, you may be going through something. Don't let the devil tell you, amen, as you should give, amen, what God has already provided. Come on, say amen. So we thank God for your giving. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. And Father, as we stretch our hands toward our basket, we are declaring in Jesus' name, God, that you will bless every seed, oh God. Bless every giver in the name of Jesus. We lift it up to you, dear God. For we remind it in the word of God that you fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. You were able to make it multiply and the increase in the name of Jesus. So God, we speak increase, oh God, over this offering, oh God, in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it right now. Amen and amen. Thank you, my brother. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. For your giving praise the lord we thank god for you at this time we thank god at this time that now it's time for us to prepare our hearts and our minds for our ministry of music Amen. and i'm going to ask that you all would prepare your hearts and your minds to receive our brother amen minister Byron is going to come and bless us with some selections of his own choosing and then we will come with the word of god amen, amen. after that but at this time we ask that you would Amen. Lift up the name of Jesus in song. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto him. So let's lift him up in our praise and our worship. Let's exalt the Lord. Amen. Minister Byron. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, good morning, Full Gospel. Good morning. good morning. Good morning to those who are watching with us online this morning. It's such an honor to be in the house of the Lord one more time, to fellowship in his presence, to fellowship with you mm -hmm. here in the house. Um, it's such a privilege today just to worship the Lord. You know, the Bible says this, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Come on. You know, I'm reminded of Acts chapter 2. Mm -hmm. On the day of Pentecost, Jesus gave his disciples a promise before he died. All right. Before he was crucified. Uh-huh. That he will send the Holy Ghost. And after our Lord and Savior has, was, was crucified, you know, but also rose again on the third day with all power in his hand, he, he, his promise came true. He called the disciples to come together on the day of Pentecost. And what happened? God sent his glory down. He sent his glory upon his disciples to equip them for their assignment, for their assignment. So God came with, the, with, with fire upon his disciples 
And that was God's charge unto them. And so today, I don't know about you, I want an outpouring of God's fire. I want an outpouring of God's fire here in full gospel. Here in the city of Harrisburg. Here in the state of Pennsylvania. Here in the United States of America. Here in this whole world. We have to be receptive of what God wants to release. But we have to hunger and thirst after righteousness. We shall be filled. So this morning, if you can, let's worship the Lord. And the songs, the songs that are going to be spoken of is releasing God's presence here. Releasing God's fire here. That the song says, Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You all we want. And God, I'm another song that God given me the right is called Fire of God. <laughs> Burn within me. Let it overflow and saturate me. Fire of God. Burn within me. Take control. Come move within me. Hallelujah. But God is so good. So I don't know about you. God, God loves desperate people. He loves desperate people who are desperate. Who, are you desperate this morning for the Lord? Are you desperate for the more of God? There's more dimensions in God that we never even been tapped into. But we have to be hungry and thirsty for it. He will take us deeper than we've ever been before. The Bible says the deep calls upon the deep. And so let's allow God to have his way this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Room, 
you're hearing, I know you're moving. I'm hearing, you know you feel me. Come now. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you put the room, I'm hearing, you know you're moving. I'm hearing, I know you feel me.
Holy Spirit, move in this place. Be the fresh anointing of your people. As we gather in your presence, a living sacrifice of praise.
Take and broke move within me. Take and broke move within me, Lord. Take and broke. Take and broke.
experience coming from this man of God. We're grateful for Amen. God is in the room. Come on, say amen. amen. The Holy Spirit is here. Amen. amen. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Yes, Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Amen. So we've asked him to come. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you that he's here right now. I can feel him all over me. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I can feel the presence of God, amen, in this place, amen. amen. So we thank God for those wonderful melodies of worship, amen. I want to thank God again for you all being here. I thank God for those that are online with us on live stream, praise the Lord. This morning, I want to invite your attention to the word of God that we're going to ask that you would go with us to the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 16, verses 1 through 23. 1 Samuel, chapter number 16, verses 1 through 23. And if you have it, let me know by rising to your feet. 1 Samuel, excuse me, chapter number 16, verses 1 through 23. Hear the word of God. And the word of the Lord says, And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go, and I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I have provided me a king 
amongst his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take an heifer, amen, with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice. Amen. And I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did, amen, that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, comest thou peaceably? And he said, peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come, come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass that when they were come, that he looked on Eliab and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his statue, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man look upon the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him to pass before Samuel. And he said, neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made a man Shammah to pass by. And he said, neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, the Lord have not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are here all thy children? And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him. For we will not sit down until he come thither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready and with, with all of a beautiful countenance and godly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. And then Samuel, amen, took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is cunning, a cunning player on a harp. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from, the, from, God, from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that he is cunning in playing and a mighty valiant man and a man of war, prudent in matters and calmly, a calmly person. And the Lord is with him. Verse 19 says, Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the, with the sheep 
And Jesse took an ass and laid it, laden with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent them by David, his son, unto Saul. And David came to Saul and stood before him. And he loved him greatly. And he became his armor bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took an harp and played with his band. So Saul was refreshed and was well. And the evil spirit departed from him. This is the word of God. This morning, you may rest off your feet. For a few moments that we have, I would like to use for this message this morning. I want to minister on the subject that God is looking for you. God is looking for you. I was recruited in the United States Army in 1975. In fact, I volunteered and I served for many years, both in active duty and in the National Guards before I retired. And the Army slogan at that time was that today's Army wants you. How many of you remember seeing that poster on the street posts in the shopping centers? How many of you remember seeing that in your schools? Raise your hand. Huh? And Uncle Sam's Army, the poster said, I want you in the U.S. Army was on display also in the recruiting center and where I went. In fact, the outside of the center was plastered with either Navy, Army, or Marines on the outside of the doors at the Union Deposit Mall. So I remember where I went at, went to, in the Union Deposit Mall. So I answered the call. I signed up because at that time I needed a job and I needed a career. But before I could serve, I had to qualify. I had to meet the Army's recruitment requirements and the Army's standards for going in to the military. There were some tests that I had to take. There were some physical conditions that I had to pass. Come on, say amen. This is way before I got to put on the uniform. And so... I qualified, and the army became my employer, well. and it became my family, mm -hmm. and it became my friend. My because that's the image Uncle Sam portrayed to me on that poster. Well, it let me know that they would take care of me, oh. that they would make sure that I had the clothes that I need, well. they would make sure that I had the food that I could eat. Come on, say amen. Well. They would make sure that I had the financial help that I could get. Mm -hmm. And so I knew I was not going alone. Mm -hmm. You see, many others had signed up well, when I did. Yeah. And we joined the team of millions of men and women. I think the statistics at the time, or the rate at the time, was perhaps about 2.5 million men and women well, that have served in the armed forces. Mm -hmm. Men and women in uniform from across the nation yes. because Uncle Sam had that finger pointed out and said, the army wants you. Come on, say amen. amen. And just like that, mm -hmm. amen, Uncle Sam, just like that poster, mm -hmm. amen, today's modern world, we see in the world in which you and I live in today, mm -hmm. there are sports and talent scouts yes. who go to high schools, yes. colleges, and universities oh. looking to recruit the next Michael Jordan, looking to recruit the next Tiger Woods, looking to recruit the next Muhammad Ali, 
looking to recruit the next LeBron James. Come on, say amen. Yeah. Looking to recruit, amen, the next Seth Carey. Come on, say amen. Yeah. Looking to recruit the next Serena Williams. Yeah. Looking to recruit the next actor like Denzel Washington. Oh. Amen. And all of that is good in its place. Oh. But this morning, amen, those of you that are watching us online, I just want to minister and talk to you, amen, and tell you that God is doing some recruiting in himself. Come on, say amen. Yeah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of the living God. When I read the word of God, amen, God called 12 disciples, amen. Come on, say amen. God was looking for somebody, amen, that would carry on the work of kingdom building. God was looking for somebody that would carry on the message of the gospel, amen, to bring salvation to every man, woman, boy, and girl. Oh, come on, say amen. God is looking for somebody that would help to bring somebody out of the gutter, amen, glory to God, bring them out of the pit and the dungeon, amen, of the stench of this world, and let them see that God is able to deliver them and keep them from falling. The Bible tells us in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, it says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro, come on, say amen, throughout the whole world to show himself strong, amen, in the behalf of them whose hearts, amen, has been perfect and loyal toward him. Oh, come on, say amen. God is telling you, amen, amen, if your heart is perfect, toward me. I can make you strong. If your heart and your mind is strong, I can help you, amen, persevere. I can help you get through it. Come on, say amen. amen. In other words, God is looking for people that he can make champions amen. on his team. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. I don't know about you, but every now and then, I like to see the track runners run on track. I like to see, amen, the people out there per run through sprint, amen, and complete on the track field, run the 100-yard dash, and the 200-meter run, amen, and jump over hurdles. Come on, say amen. I like to see that, amen, because I can see, amen, that these people are very athletic, but they have a mind to persevere. They have a mind to continue on because each one of them want to be champions. On their team. Come on, say amen. amen. And so he's looking for men and women of faith yes. who will one day make a difference in this world. On, and in my imagination this morning, I can see God from the portals of heaven, yes, amen, pointing down, amen, on earth, looking at you and I and saying unto us, I want you. Come on, say amen. amen. I can see him, amen, looking down from the heavens, earth, amen, and say, I want to recruit you. I want you. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, God is looking for you. Look at yourself. Point to yourself and say, God is looking for me. God is looking for me. When nobody else wants you, God said, I want you. I want you. Yeah. Yeah. The only qualifications and requirements is that you be born again yeah. through his son, Jesus Christ, when you believe on his name. You see, when I was joining the military, I had to walk like a duck. Uh -huh. Brother Gerald, amen, my feet couldn't be flat. Uh -huh. Amen, come on, say amen. amen. I had to make sure Amen, that I had all my bones in place. Come on, say amen. I had to make sure that none of my fingers were missing. Come on, say amen. I had to make sure that I didn't have a healing problem. Amen, glory to the Lamb of God. But the thing about my God, amen, your perfections don't bother him. You know, come on, say amen. Your flaws don't bother him. He just wants somebody that he can recruit. In other words, <laughs> he can use you just as you are. Look at your neighbor and say, God can use me just as I am. So let's turn our attention to our scripture text 
in 1 Samuel chapter 16. Where God will give us a clear picture of the kind of person that he's looking for. To be his, on his champion team. Amen. I want to say that again. His champion team. Who, his, who is his choice. And who is not. In verse 1. Amen. And the first part of verse 2. Of our scripture. In chapter 16. God tells you and I right off the bat. Who he is not looking for. Let's read it. The word of God says, And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? He said, Fill thine horn with oil, and I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king amongst his sons. And Samuel said, Amen. How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. See, that's wrong with some people. When God tells them to go, we get so offended, we get so afraid. And we need to understand that we got God on our side. We don't need nobody else. Come on, say amen. We need to stop worrying about what others folk. We need to stop worrying about how powerful they are. We need to understand that we're here to do a job. We're here, amen, to advance the kingdom of the living God. We're here, amen, glory to God, to wreak havoc, amen, on the enemy's world. So he said, if I go, Saul will hear it and will kill me. Samuel was questioning his own ability, his own poise, his own mindset. Come on, say amen. amen. And yet he served in a position as a prophet. Come on, say amen. amen. And the priest, come on, say amen. amen. God is not looking for hard-headed and hard-hearted people mm-hmm. to understand the meaning here. Huh. Huh. Amen. Let me summarize this as we look at, amen, 1 Samuel Chapters 1 through 15 in 1 Samuel. Amen. And in this summary, we see that most of Israel's early history, the nation of Israel was not ruled by a king, but directed by God himself. How many of you remember that? Come on, say amen. God has spoken to Moses and commissioned him in the book of Genesis. Come, Come on, say amen. To pull them out of Egypt. And then he told Joshua, amen, later on, amen, to bring them to the promised land. And after that, the nation of Israel was led by judges, amen, until the beginning of the book of 1 Samuel. When the people asked God to give them a king. But against his will, amen, our father God, he allowed them to select the king. And they chose Saul. You see, at first Saul did okay, but later he became, it became very clear that Saul had a problem of obeying God. Let me say it one more time. Later it became a problem Saul had of obeying God. He became hard-headed and hard-hearted. That's what some people get when they get in power. They become hard-headed. And hard-hearted. Come on, say amen. amen. And so that brings you and I, amen, to 1 Samuel 16, 1 and 2, uh-huh. where the chapter opens with Samuel, who was God's prophet. Uh-huh. Amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. Mm-hmm. It was sad and sorrowful mm-hmm. about Saul's failure mm-hmm. as a king. Well. Samuel had been moping around. Amen. Feeling sorry for himself. Y'all know some folks like that. Come on, say amen. Amen. He was feeling sorry for himself and for Saul. How many of you know that two sorry people can't make it in this world? Sorry people don't pick up sorry people. Come on, say amen. So we got to be careful, amen, who we hang out with. We got to be careful, amen, whose spirit we allow to fall on us. Come on, say amen. 
So when Samuel, amen, found out that Saul was sorrowful, Saul was moping around, he too became sorrowful, amen, and began to mope around. Come on, say amen. And so when God had to say unto him, how long are you going to put pout and mourn about Saul? Because I have rejected him. I have rejected him. And I'm here to tell you this morning, church, those of you watching us, my live stream, you don't want God to reject you. So why did God reject Saul? Number one, we need to understand it was because Saul had developed two sinful attitudes. He was hard-headed. He was hard-hearted. And he was disobedient. Yes. Come on, say amen. amen. He was hard-headed, hard-hearted. Hard mm -hmm. Amen. Because he was disobedient. Mm -hmm. Come on, say amen. My God, my God. In First Samuel, matter of fact, chapter number 28. Mm -hmm. let's, let's look at that. Praise the Lord. In 18, look at what it says in First Samuel 28 and 18. Somebody get it and read it. Uh huh. Eighteen. Uh huh. Read, read it, Pastor, please. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, mm -hmm. nor executeth his fierce wrath mm -mm. upon Amalek, therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. This day. He disobeyed God. Come on, say amen. Mm -hmm. And when he went and he was told to go destroy the Amalekites, uh -huh. he decided he wanted to take some stuff back to his crib. Come on, say amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And so he decided he wanted to take some stuff back to his crib. Come on, say amen. And did not do what God told him to do. He told him to destroy everything. Everything, amen, do not leave nothing undone. Do not, amen, leave anything left. Come on, say amen. And so he decided, amen, because he was king at the time, I believe, he decided in his heart that he got hard-hearted and wanted to do what he thought he was big and bad enough to do because after all, he was sitting on the throne. Let's go to First Chronicles 10 and 13. Somebody get that? Read that. Uh huh. Read what it says. And the, and the king answered them roughly. Second Chronicles or First? First Chronicles. Chronicles. Oh, I'm sorry. Ten thirteen. Amen. Mm hmm. I'm in the wrong chapter. I'm sorry. Mm hmm. Hmm. Lord have mercy. Wow. He died because of his transgressions against the Lord. Come on, say amen. He was unfaithful to the Lord. He did not keep his word. How many of you know that your word is your bond? How many of you understand that when you give your word out, your word has weight. Your word carries something with it. Amen. Glory to God. And God was looking for him to keep his word. Amen. So Saul died as a result of that. And then further on down the line, he decided he didn't want to hear God anymore. So he decided he wanted to consort mediums, amen, and sorcerers. Come on, say amen. He decided that he wanted to sort, consort those folks, amen, to get some kind of a guidance. And so then, when you and I look back on Saul's ring as king, the record clearly reveals that Saul did not have a good track record for wisdom. Amen. For example. And for example, he also offered up burnt offerings instead of waiting for the prophet to arrive. Amen. He made a rash vow that almost cost his son Jonathan's life. God gave Saul a direct command that threw Samuel to attack, we said earlier, the Amalekites and destroy all that belonged to them. 
But instead, obeying God, Saul kept the wicked king Agag alive. Look at what he also did. Not only did he bring the goods in from the, from the raid, but he also kept the king alive. Come on, say amen. Listen, listen to what I'm saying now this morning. Amen. Amen. As a prisoner and kept the best of his sheep and cattle. He brought him back inside the palace. He brought the king back, brought the stuff back inside the palace. And when Samuel confronted Saul, he doubled down and denied his wrongdoings and tried to convince him that he had obeyed the Lord. He tried to pull one over on him. Come on, say amen. But how many know that you can't pull nothing over on God? Amen. God sees it all. God, it, this is the same God that we serve. Amen. That told Cain that, he, that, uh, that Cain killed Abel. He told him that you kill your brother. Smelt this blood coming up from the ground. Samuel feared that Saul would kill him if he selected another to replace him as king. In verse 2, notice what Samuel said to the Lord. He said, how can I go if Saul will hear it? He will kill, amen, me. And I believe, amen, you and I need to understand to believe at that time he may have done that because his mind had begun to become corrupt. Because yeah. by this time, Saul was truly hard-hearted. Yeah. Yeah. Notice Saul so. was willing to defy God mm. and kill Samuel, mm. God's prophet. Mm. A man who loved him right. because he didn't, care. he didn't care. A man who was loyal yeah. to him. Mm. Saul was willing to do whatever it took to hold on to his power as king. Wow. This should sound familiar for us in the modern world uh -huh. today. Come on, say amen. Yeah. People are willing to hold on, hold on to power. The power. Mm -hmm. Amen. Even when they know that they're wrong and they need to be set down. Come on, say amen. Yeah, Saul had become cold yeah. and calculating. Mm. A hard-hearted and hard-headed man that God could no longer use on his team. So he rejected him. Come on, say amen. How many of you ever played basketball? Raise your head as a youth growing up. How many of you played sports when you were growing up? And then when they went down the line, amen, and they said, I want you. I want you. And I want you. There you are standing over there like a wallflower. Come on, say amen. Wondering if they're going to pick you. Huh? One of they gonna select you. And and then and then when they got down to the last one, the people that were selecting the team on both sides said, Well, I guess I have to take them. Huh? But you felt rejected because they wouldn't select you as number one. Come on, say amen. Uh, they would select you. And they didn't know that it was, you had some special abilities. Come on, say amen. I don't know about you, but I felt rejected. When I was select, wasn't selected on a basketball court, or I wasn't selected, amen, to play football on the football team, amen. But that's all right. God had another plan for this brother. God had another plan for my life. God's got another plan for you. So the Bible says in the word of God, Saul had also become cool church family, mm -hmm. those that are watching us live mm -hmm. and calculating and hard-hearted yeah. man that could no longer use mm -hmm. that he, God couldn't use him anymore right. on his team. Mm -hmm. So he rejected him. Right. You see, God is not looking for hard-headed people or hard-hearted people, right. especially those in the church right. who claim holiness and salvation yet walk in disobedience according to his word. Yet walk in disobedience according to his word. If God did this to a king, it doesn't matter if we're on the choir. If you're still not following God, you're still going to be rejected. Come on, say amen. It doesn't matter if you're the Sunday school teacher. Come on, say amen. If you're still not obedient to the word of God, you're still going to be rejected. Come on, say amen. 
It does not matter if you're a bishop, amen, if you're a pastor, amen, glory to God, if you're an apostle in the church. It does not matter if you're serving in the fivefold ministry of the church, amen, if you're still not, amen, following God like you should, amen, God is saying, amen, glory to God, I have no respect the person. I will put the stamp and reject you. However, just know also according to his word and for those who walk in disobedience. However, I just want you to know that although God still loves people that are hard-headed and hard-hearted, in the end, he still will reject them if they don't repent. So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got a way of escape. The end is not the end. Come on, say amen. Hallelujah. Are you glad about it? The way of escape comes through Jesus Christ. The second thing God is not just looking for is handsome men or beautiful women. And describe, amen, in 2 Samuel. Same chapter, 1 Samuel, amen, verses 2 through 10. So by this time, God had already rejected Saul mm -hmm. as king. And now, amen, he was willing to reveal to Samuel who he had selected instead. Yep. So to quell Samuel's fear of being killed, uh -huh. in the word of God this morning, God gave him specific instructions. He told him to hold a revival service and invite Jesse and his family. After the revival service, Samuel called for Jesse's sons to be brought to him so God could show him who the next king would be. The first son he put in front of him was Eliab, come on, say amen, who made a big impression on Samuel, probably because he was tall, muscular, you know, big biceps, big triceps, come on, say amen. Huh? He had strong features, strong characteristics. Come on, say amen. amen. Fitting of a king. But God said, no, he's not the one. Ah. And so then you and I, this morning, we must remember that God sees deeper down than we can. God can see deeper, amen, beyond, amen, our outward, our physical appearances. God sees down inside the heart. Come on, say amen. Amen. And what we may see does not matter because God sees the heart. The Bible says, in fact, we always say it all the time in the church that God knows the numbering of the strings upon our head. Come on, say amen. He knows, amen, every fragment. He knows every number of the strings on your head. Come on, say amen. For those of you who got hair, amen, God knows it. Then, 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 we will begin to select people if we see that, that God approve of, not just based on their physical appearance, not just based on their status, come on, say amen, not just based on their pedigree, not just based on their education, come on, say amen, not just based because their mom and daddy served you in for 30 years, not just based on that, but I want to know, are they really walking with God? Are they being obedient? To the word of the living God. Yeah. Not just based on their ethnicity. Come on, say amen. So Jesse brings out son number two. A minute to have. And God said, no, not him either. And then son number three was Shama. Most of the other seven sons he brought unto him. All which God tells Samuel, no, they're not the one I'm looking for. The main reason is that God is not impressed, again, by physical and outward appearances. You and I in the modern world, we look for people that are, amen, that, we, that impress us. Amen, come on, say amen. With the nice haircut, the nice shave, come on, say amen. Oh, y'all don't hear me this morning. Those, amen, that are in some kind of physical condition or physical shape that go to the gym every day of the week. Come on, say amen. We look for those that are in the Glamour magazine. 
Come on, say amen. Every now and then, Brother Gerald, I look on Facebook and they say, these are the handsome men that live in your community. They say these are the good looking women in your neighborhood. Amen. They put all of that out there. Well, they're based on the outward appearance. But I want to know if somebody looking for somebody who's in God. That's the measurement that the world gives. Huh? So the Bible says, he said, glory to God, summer was not the one I'm looking for. The main reason that God is not impressed again by anybody's physical stature. And Jesus said it in this way in John 7 and 24. Amen. Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with right as judgment. What's in the heart? What's in the heart? You cannot get to know somebody until you spend a number of time with them. Come on, say amen. Find out what's in the heart. Other people will judge you by your looks, but not God. He sees all the way down in your heart. And the person he's looking for is a person described in 1 Samuel 13 and 14. Someone get that for me and read it. First Samuel 13 and 14. 13 and verse 14. Uh huh. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. Mm -mm. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be captain yeah. over his people. Look at that. Because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Lord have mercy. The Lord has sought him a different person, a man after his own heart. Amen. Look at somebody say, I am, I am a, person a person after God's own heart. After God's own heart. And if so, he's looking for you this morning. Amen. If so, he's looking for you this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And this brings me to my final point. Hmm. That God is looking for the humble, the humble. and the holy. After Samuel thought he had gone through all of Jesse's sons, well, Jesse reluctantly spoke up and said he had one more son, which was David, yeah. who was his youngest son, whom he had left in the field taking care mm -hmm. of his sheep. You notice the story. All the older ones had passed by right. Samuel to look at. He kept the youngest one out in the field attending the sheep. That's right. The little shepherd boy, yeah. David. Mm -hmm. Samuel said to Jesse, go get him. And Jesse sent his sons to get him. Now I can imagine what the room was like. I can imagine what the atmosphere was like mm -hmm. when they heard him tell him, told Samuel the prophet to go get David amongst his brothers. When Samuel saw David, he was not all that impressed. You see, he was a prophet and David just didn't impress him. Because after all, he was a little scrawny and a ruddy little boy. Come on, say amen. Just a little ruddy kid. Come on, say amen. And, and so as Samuel saw him, he was not what he thought would be God's choice for a king. Because again, man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Samuel had studied every young man that passed through his father's house, all of Jesse's sons. And he couldn't wrap his arm around the fact that he chose this little ruddy boy. Come on, say amen. And that's what I like about the army. The army makes men out of boys. Come on, say amen. The army has a way. Of making men come home as, as boys come home as men. Am I right, Brother Gerald? Come on, say amen. The military has a way. The Navy and the Marines have a way of making men come home. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. As young men and they go in as boys. Come on, say amen. And they understand, amen, that what they pour into them, what they pour into them is what they believe that they can become and they can achieve. Whatever it is that they have 
accomplish any goal that sat Amen. before him. Amen. David was a young man, yes, he was. a young boy around the age of 16 years old. That's right. And he was the youngest son. Hmm. And therefore, he was on the lowest rung of the social ladder yes. of his family. Come on, say amen. He was ruddy either because he had red hair, mm -hmm. amen, or red skin from being in the sun all day long, amen. attending to his herd. Mm -hmm. And he was a sheep herder, by the way, yeah. which was at the bottom of society's totem pole. Huh. But he was a handsome young man. Yes, How many of you know back in the Western time, amen, sheep and cattle could not be together? Come on, say amen. Yeah. Because the cattle, amen, glory to God, would eat up the grass and the sheep would come in and trample everything down. Mm. My God, my God. Watch this. Mm. As soon as David came and stood before Samuel, so. God said to Samuel, arise, arise. anoint him, yeah. for he is he. Is He's the one, He's the one. to be the king of my people Israel. So Samuel obeyed God and appointed David, mm -hmm. which was signified to all the nation of Israel yes. that he was God's choice God's for the next king, mm. anointed yes. with oil yes. at an early age, yes. at the age of 16, yes. to sit mm. on the throne in Israel. Come on, say amen. Yes. And the Bible says, and immediately the spirit of the Lord came upon David. Yeah. And he remained from that day forward mm -hmm. until his death. Yeah. Get that, get that, get that. Those of you that are watching us by live stream. Mm -hmm. He was anointed at the age of 16 years old. Amen. All poured on the top of him. Yes. Anointed as king. Yes. Amen. And he remained that way forward until his death. Yes. Oh, y'all don't hear me. And notice at the same time, David was being anointed. The Bible said, amen, point two, the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Yeah, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Yeah. The minute, amen, that David had been anointed king, the evil spirit departed from Saul. Uh -huh. my God, my God. And the evil spirit began yes, sir. to trouble him yeah. as it came upon him. The point here is that the, the devil huh. tempts us to disobey God. Well, just like it did King Saul. Yeah, did. And when we do, we get the same way. Mm -hmm. We too, amen, can understand and get the same spirit of the enemy of this world. Uh. The guilt and the condemnation on us for our weaknesses uh. mm -hmm. and our failures. Come on, say amen. God is looking for some men that he can make champions out of. Come on, say amen. Because Saul was being vexed by that demonic spirit from the Lord. And he sought counsel of his assistants. And they, amen, suggested that they find someone who could soothe his troubled mind with music. How many know that music soothes a savage beast? Raise your hand. Amen. How many of you know every now and then when you need to be sued, what do you do, amen, when you go home and you want to be sued? You put on some music. Come on, say amen. You turn up some gospel music, amen. Or you turn up something to soothe, amen, your anger spirit or something, amen, to calm you down. Come on, say amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. And so when David played, I can imagine that David played the harp so good, amen. Glory to God. Not only, amen, did he play it so good to soothe the heart of Saul, but it took away that thing that was in him that caused him to rise up to be disobedient my God, my God. unto God. 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 Soothe and move that demon devil right on out the way. And David soothed his troubled mind with music. Yes. Look at God. <laughs> Look at somebody say, God will set you up every time. Set you up every time. Yeah, God set it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah he set it up. Yep. Come on, say amen. amen. He set it up. Come on, say amen. amen. And they picked David. <laughs> God had already prepared David for the job. Yes. He had a reputation as a skillful musician, <laughs> as well as being a brave young man. Full of common sense. So Saul sends for David and made him one of his armor bearers. 
And David began serving the king. And this was going to be, amen, an on-the-job OJT, on-the-job training. Come on, say amen. Amen. Training for David in preparation for him becoming the next king of Israel. David reminds us of two essential qualities for a champion of God. Yeah. Humility, Humility and holiness. holiness. Humility and holiness. James 4 and 6 says, God resists the proud, right. but give grace to the humble. Uh -huh. And in Matthew 23 and 12, amen, the word of the Lord says, whoever exalts himself will be humble. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. Well, I don't know about you, but I really don't care, amen, glory to God, if people don't recognize me. As long as God recognizes me as a servant of the living God, I know one day that he will exalt me in due season. If I reap not, God, amen, glory to God, will bless me and my family. Come on, say amen. amen. By these scriptures, God is saying that the pathway to greatness is through humility, church family. Those of you that are watching us live stream, because as one who is willing to serve God amen. and serve others, no matter where they are, amen, no matter what they are doing, glory to God, through patience and not trying to exalt themselves, mm -hmm. but waiting for God to put them where they need to be, where he wants them to be. Amen. That's, right. That's humility. That's right. So God is looking for people who are great enough to be humble uh -huh. and holy people who are set apart unto him. Amen. amen. In their heart, in their mind, yes. and in their soul. Come on, say amen. amen. In their behavior. I'm going to say that again. In their behavior. Living like they belong to Jesus yes. and want to please him amen. because they love him. Yes. And so as I close this morning, Maybe you don't see yourself as being either humble or holy. But David was humble. David was holy. God saw something that Samuel the prophet could not see. See, God saw in him, amen, a king that was ready and hunger, ready to take the throne later on in his life. God saw him as a friend of Jonathan. God saw him, amen, as a giant slayer. Come on, say amen. God is looking for somebody who wants to slay giants. God is looking for somebody, amen, glory to God, who love him with all their heart, all their soul, and all their mind. Come on, say amen. But you got to be humble and you got to be holy. Amen. If you're not right with God, I suggest that you get right now. Amen. Holy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Come on, say amen. Don't feel bad. Just simply take the next step. Amen. And God will do the rest. Glory to the Lamb of God. Notice in the Bible that David did not argue with the prophet Samuel. David did not argue with his daddy and say, I'm not ready for that yet. David didn't do none of that. David just did what the prophet told him to do. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And later on down in life, when he was ready to take the throne, in the word of the living God, a few years later in his life, at the age of 30, David took yes. the throne in ready in Israel. He was ready to take the next step. Yes. And you need to be ready to take the next step. Yes. To come to God and confess it to him your sins and take the next step yeah. to repent and believe on the Son of God yeah. Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior for the forgiveness of your sins the washing of your soul that you may be restored back to where you need to be so God is looking for you this morning come on say amen I want to know, are you ready to come unto him? Are you ready to accept him? It doesn't matter you trying to get yourself in shape. Previously before entering in the military, 
They used to have a pre-service entrance level. And what they would do is that they would take many people in this area to the gap. And they would give them two weeks of training before they go into the military to prepare them for what they were about to become as soldiers, as men and women. They've since stopped that, I believe. They don't do that anymore. Soldiers of God, you come just as you are. God will prepare you. God will fix you up. God will make you a champion that no man could ever imagine. Come on, say amen. That the earth will not believe. Come on, say amen. You see, because when I came home, I've said this before, at that time I came home with triceps and biceps. Now I come home now, amen, I ain't got none. Come on, say amen. The triceps and biceps are gone. The physique that I once had is gone. Come on, say amen. But it doesn't mean I left the Lord. It just means that I left the army. Come on, say amen. And I decided to serve the Lord. How about you? Amen. God, amen, looks at the heart. God looks at the heart. God is looking for you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Will you accept him as Lord and Savior? What I love about this pastor's minister, Iris, amen, it's just, he was just a little boy. And God used him just as he was. God prepared David to be the king as a little boy. Come on, say amen. Doesn't matter your age. Doesn't matter how much you know. Because if you seek the kingdom of God, God will bless you. Come on, give God a hand clap. Amen. This is the word of God. Let's stand on our feet. Unless we extend the doors of discipleship, we open the doors of the church. We ask, amen, if you're watching us by live stream, this message has been a blessing to you. Amen. The Bible lets us know that the word of God says that not only was God preparing to anoint David as king, he had already told Samuel that David was the one. He wasn't worried about what Jesse was trying to do in presenting his sons to Samuel. He had already known that David was out in the field tending sheep. That's not the one. So God knows what you're going through. God knows, amen, what you are experiencing. God is looking for you. The same gifts that you have, God can use them in his house. Come on, say amen. In his ministry and in the church. Come on, say amen. God can use that same gift that you have. Amen. Serving in his kingdom. God said in his word, the Bible says, he that cometh unto me, he will in no wise cast out. And you've probably been rejected. You've been thrown away. You've been put aside. You've been kicked aside. As I said earlier, off of some special teams and so forth in your life, come and join God's team. Come and become a champion of life. Come and become a champion of healing and deliverance. Come on, say amen. Come and become a champion of salvation. Come on, say amen. And I'm here to let you know, praise, praise the Lord. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. If you come, I guarantee you God will make you a champion. Again, come on, say amen. This is the word of God. Is there one? Is there one watching us out there? Is there one that want to surrender to God? If that's you, Lift your hands up right where you're at and say, Father, I surrender my life to you. I give my life to you. Here I am, God. Accept me as I am. In the name of Jesus Christ, I repent and I believe, oh God, hallelujah, that you died on Calvary's cross for me. I believe it, oh God, with all my heart. And I ask you, Lord, to come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. You can do it right where you are. That's you. If you've done that, give God a praise clap this morning. Come on, say amen. Amen, amen, amen. You may rest off of your feet. We're going to ask that we would come now. 
Amen. We ask that you would come and...